Hello and welcome into another episode of Rapid Recap. I am Greg Smith, Senior Recruiting Analyst here at Inside Nebraska. That's Steve Marek, Staff Writer and Football Extraordinaire, also here at Inside Nebraska. I always say that and think it would be weird if you worked somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but we are live here on Memorial, at Memorial Stadium uh, after a holiday edition of Matt Rule kind of meeting with the media and dissecting, going back and talking some about Minnesota and what happened in that game, but also, of course, spinning it forward to the big noon kickoff matchup this weekend against Colorado but Steve first things first we had some injury updates today yeah and it's a big important one for the Husky receivers Isaiah Garcia Castaneda mm -hmm. uh, he is out for the season unfortunately with a torn ACL Matt, Matt oh. Rule said just late in the game I think it was a fourth fourth quarter uh, somebody just kind of slammed into Isaiah's knee and and mm -hmm. just tore, tore his ACL and he will be out for the season so that's just a, a brutal blow to the Huskers receiver room. Right. They were on uh, pretty thin. That that group as a whole mm -hmm. was pretty thin before the season. Um, everybody knows about Xavier Betts kind of leaving the team for the second time in his career. Yep. Um, but now with uh, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda not being out there either, I mean, he was a veteran guy. He had the most targets in the Minnesota game with five. He only caught one of them for five yards, but still it's good to have him out there. Right. With him not being out there, Oof. I mean, this is this is not a good situation for the Huskers receiver room. A lot of guys are going to have to step up. Uh, you still, the good thing is, let's get the good stuff out of the way right now. <laughs> yeah. Marcus Washington, he's not suspended right now. Yeah. He was suspended for the he first He played half. well in the yeah. second half. And I he thought. did, and he had a clear chemistry relationship with Jeff Sims. I mm -hmm. mean, once he was, once Marcus was on the field, Jeff Sims was was targeting and, yeah. and looking at him. Um, a little too much on that final interception, <laughs> right. but. Uh, Let's let's move on from that. Yeah, but, yeah uh, we'll leave that if we want. Um, yeah, but outside of uh, Marcus Washington, Billy Kemp needs to get involved. He's still out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex Bullock showed enough in the in fall camp and, and spring ball to earn himself a scholarship as a former walk-on. So those th those guys are going to be your, kind of your core guys. But then you have to look at the true freshman hall. Jalen Lloyd, um, mm -hmm. Malachi Coleman, they both played. Not a lot, but they did see some action yep. at Minnesota. Jalen Lloyd had that reverse. He took it yeah. for a first down. I think he could have had more on that yeah, with, with a yeah. couple blocks. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But so, I mean, yeah, somebody is just going to have to step up for the Huskers receiver room. And obviously, Jeff, Jeff Sims is going to have to throw the ball a lot better um, yeah. for that to happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was the, kind of the big big one today from Matt Rule. But I also think Matt Rule did not talk a lot about Thomas Fedoni specifically, yep. um, but he did talk a lot about b being better in the passing game overall, both decision-making mm -hmm. on the field from Jess Sims and kind of how they call things with Marcus Satterfield. I don't think he didn't kind of say one or the other was totally at fault and that was the only thing they needed to prove, improve. It was both of them and figuring out ways to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. I think Fedoni's included in that um, as well. But one of the big talking points, and this is going to be something that comes up, up all week long, right, is Dion, right? So Coach Prime, because uh, we can't for some reason like legally contracted and not call him Coach Sanders for whatever reason, um, he came up uh, in today's press conference, obviously, and Matt Rule was asked about if specifically and directly if he was surprised at the start that Colorado had last week going down to Fort Worth and taking down TCU. Matt Rule flatly said no, like he was not surprised um, by seeing that. Um, and his reasoning was is that Dion Sanders is a football guy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Matt Rule knows Deion Sanders, and Deion mm -hmm. Sanders knows Matt Rule. They have uh, come together uh, over their coaching times. I think um, Rule told the story about how he was recruiting one of Dion's kids when yeah. Dion was coaching the, high school the, the in Trinity Texas. Christian, yeah. Trinity Christian in Texas. So uh, they, they all know each other, and Matt Rule is just, you know, he I don't think he – he understands or, or maybe is in, in the just kind of bashing Dion and how he's building his program with all the transfers, 80 plus transfers. Um, Matt Rule kind of kept it. He was very respectful mm -hmm. of Colorado and Dion Sanders and he just, he knows Dion is a football guy and uh, he, he knows he grinds and he, he might look like he's doing everything and putting on a show with all the YouTube videos and, and how he talks and everything. But behind all that is a true football coach. And, <laughs> and, I, think and I think he showed that against TCU. I was going to say, you know, I think that that's something that has often gotten lost in all of the Deion yeah. Sanders hype. And this is, and it's partly because, too, of how he was as a player. He was so flashy as a player. But he, would, but, but you'd forget, I mean, he was one of the, probably the best cornerback in the history of football, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he's definitely in the conversation. Anytime you're in, at least in the conversation for that, you did a lot of hard work behind the scenes, yeah. right? And I think Matt Rule kind of alluded to that, um, saying that there was a reason why his poster was on everybody's wall. It wasn't just because he was great in the end. It was also because he, he practiced really hard and he prepared um, like a true pro as well. And you see that already in his team. You also see him kind of instilling confidence in his team, which is what I think a lot of that, um, all of the kind of the stuff around the team and the videos and, you know, the, the pregame speeches, a lot of that stuff is something that Nebraska needs a little bit more of, which is that confidence, right? He exudes confidence. So 
-hmm. how could his team not be like that? Um, and so Nebraska could use some of that confidence. We'll see if they can build it as they go out to Colorado, because as Matt Rule said quite a few times, no matter what's going on with, with Coach Sanders, no matter the, the atmosphere in Boulder, it's football, right? Yeah, I mean, that was another big thing that we'll touch on at Inside Nebraska, and mm -hmm. I'll be writing a story on it, is, you know, Matt Rule knows what's happening. He knows all the hype around this yep. game. He knows about Deion Sanders. He knows, he knows the history about, of the, of the, the history rivalry. Of the rivalry. Mm -hmm. He knows the tempo that Sean Lewis, the Buffs offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. um, plays with. He knows the altitude. Boulder's really high up. Everybody knows about the altitude. But the thing that Matt Rule wants to uh, kind of just drill into his, his team's head is it's just about the football. It's about who tackles better who runs better, who throws the ball better, uh, who uh, blocks better. So, I mean, that's just the thing that I think Matt Rule really wants to hone in on with his kids uh, is just like not worrying about all that other stuff. Just worry about what you can control and you can control how well you block how fast you run, how well you run, how well you catch the ball, how well you throw the ball. So I yeah. think that was a good, and, good point. And he made a really good point, Matt Rule did, and I did until he said this. I was like, the light bulb moment had happened. He goes, you know, ha A, after these first two games of the season, being in hostile environments on the road, we'll be a significantly better football team for having played these two games in those two environments. And that Minnesota game, which is while Minnesota is not known for like having the rowdiest environment, they when they've up. been, yeah, when they've mm -hmm. been pretty good and they yeah. have been here recently, they've been really good at creating in a nice environment. Matt Rule talked about how the student section, if you remember those two times where they had penalties inside the five, they yep. were right in Minnesota's student section. They had the gold out for the first game of the season because as Matt Rule also said, and I think that this was extremely smart and, and self-aware of where his program is, Matt Rule said they did a gold out in the first game of the season. You've never seen anything like that in the first game. It's usually much later, but every time somebody plays Nebraska, they see that in, it's a big game for them. We've talked about that. Like I feel like we as a staff have talked about that, fans have talked about that does Nebraska match the intensity of teams who have since the, since they came into the league teams have been gearing up to play against Nebraska and we saw that to start off the year with the gold out but Nebraska will be better for having gone through those two environments Nebraska is relevant they don't have the wins to be relevant but <laughs> yeah. they're still relevant across the nation people show up and want to beat Nebraska yes. they want to watch Nebraska look at the TV ranking you'll see a huge number yeah. for this coming weekend like yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be an absurd TV rankings number absolutely and so before we get out of here I want to give you the opportunity you had any other final thoughts uh, from Matt Rule Day uh, before we wrap up? Not from Matt Rule, but we'll have plenty on Inside Nebraska. Just like the, the Colorado coaching staff, though, because I, I mentioned Sean, Sean Lewis. Sean Lewis, kind of an interesting career. He was mm -hmm. in Omaha coaching tight ends at UNO when yeah. it still had a football program. Mm -hmm. And also Bill O'Boyle, the offensive line coach from Colorado, mm -hmm. He spent like six or seven years around there at Shadron State as a head coach, and he was there coaching O-line before that at Shadron State for the Eagles, too. So kind of some Nebraska ties yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Um, Deion Sanders coaching staff. Look at that. Like he, he had to reach to Nebraska to, bolt, to buff his <laughs> staff up a little bit. Yes. <laughs> All right, but that's going to do it for us today. Like Steve said, make sure you're checking out InsideNebraska.com. We'll have full coverage of Matt Rule's uh, talk today with the media, plus coverage throughout the week. I think we'll have four different availabilities this week. Make sure you like this video up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get these videos directly into your feed and we will catch you guys next time.